Greetings, Minecrafters. Non-Sanity here, and welcome to episode 13 of All the Mods 3 Remix, where I'm going to continue in the Blood Magic Room by adding in Woot, which I didn't get to last time. So, bunch to do. Let's get started. We do have a serious infestation around here. Squirrel. Bunny. Squirrel, can I push you over onto the conveyor belt? Oh, there you went. <laughs> Hyper Bunny, I can't get you out. Not without some tools. All right, oh, I need some food. Uh, I guess my meat is empty. I'll have to fill that up a bit. All right, into the blood magic room. I made a lot of... Well, they're all, I took them all out. A lot of the slates. I changed the first item from that X object to my weak blood orb. And I went ahead, since I had a tier 5 uh, uh, blood altar, I made the Archmage blood orb, which is another star in a tier 5 for 80,000 LP. To get that 80,000, I've been adding, I've been upgrading the runes. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch of these runes of capacity. They each add 2,000? Yeah, 2,000. So I've got a whole bunch of those. Then I added a whole bunch of runes of self-sacrifice, which add, I think, 10% to how much LP you get every time you jab yourself. And then I added a bunch of displacement runes because I'm going to be moving fluid in and out. Uh, and then I'm set up here to continue with the stuff we're going to put down here. Now, uh, actually, as sometimes happens, sometimes deliberately, sometimes not deliberately, I filmed all this. I did all this, I filmed it, but for some reason, and I'm going to check to make sure this audio isn't damaged, it was going beep, beep, beep throughout the entire video and it was like in the audio track of my microphone i don't know what caused it uh, when i tested again it wasn't happening so it must have been just that one evening so i didn't want to inflict that upon you because it sure was annoying me so i erased it and i'm making it afresh so the first thing we need to do is go back to the main base and work on some woot there we go all right, Woot. Well, the first thing you need to do is make a Stygian Iron Anvil. It's not expensive. It's uh, some of the Stygian Iron. Actually, quite a bit of it, and I'm frozen. Hello? Follow the bouncing ball. Stygian. Okay. Stygian Iron block. So, 11 Stygian Iron. Now, where do you get the Stygian Iron? Well, that comes from Stygian Iron Ore. Where do you dig that up? You don't. You make it. Uh, you take either two iron or an iron ore. This is probably the obvious way to do it. Unless you can, unless you have 3x or 4x or 5x ore processing, then this might be a little cheaper. But it doesn't matter. But this, by the time you're, you can do that, you've got plenty of resources. Netherrack and soul sand with this yaw hammer, which is just a bunch of mob drops. Pretty cheap. Put those together, you get the Stygian iron ore, and then you process that in any way you prefer to uh, make your Stygian iron. I was using the... Uh, it isn't listed in here. But it worked in the my normal ore processing. Then you can take the yaw hammer, and not with any of these recipes. It's probably simpler. Well, yep, here we go. Two Stygian iron ingots with the yaw hammer makes a Stygian iron plate. And that's what I need right now, is some plates. Uh, get some iron. I got two of these accidentally, but that's okay. Now that you've made a little bit of these plates, it's cheaper, instead of making them with two Stygian iron, you make them with one and a plate die. So how do you make the plate die? That uses the anvil. Stone slab, Stygian iron plate. This 
uh, slot is what you right-click the iron with. These six are what you drop on top of it, and then hit it with the yaw hammer. Now I've got a automated user back here, set to activate block with item, right click, upper left slot only, and I've put the yaw hammer there. It's constantly trying to bang on the anvil with the hammer. And up here is an iron dropper from random things. I've set it to eject continuously with a 20 tick pickup delay, and I've turned off my magnet. So what you do, right click with the uh, tile, oh, you can hear the hammer running now, toss in the Stygian iron plate, it gets dropped, and I now have the plate die. Now the anvil can be used to make all the dies. You put some iron bars in there, you get the mesh die. That could be used to make this soul dust from soul sand in the crafting uh, table. That's going to be important. Uh, the stone slab to make the plate die, that helps you make the Stygian iron plates for cheaper. A bit of nether quartz gets you the shard die, and that's used to make various shards. Quartz, nether star, you get nine of those at least for one nether star. Three ender shards, three emerald shards, three diamond shards. So, yep. Uh, then the core die, using redstone, that's used to make all these guys up here. You can also use the anvil to make the plates, but you can do it in a crafting table just as easily, so I recommend doing it that way. And you can also uh, make uh, Stygian Iron Dust. Oh, you get three. That actually is a slightly better way to do it, but uh, this setup I've got only does one recipe at a time. If I put a stack of each of these in there, I would drop one stack of one thing, and then stack of another, and then stack of another. Probably wouldn't work right. You could rig it so that it could work, but eh. I'll just do it in crafting table. They can do the soul sand in there, but they can do that in a crafting table. I think all of these, all the rest of these, can be done in the crafting table. No, oh, no, this is the one. This is one you'll have to do later. Once we make an ender shard, we need to condition it with a particular mob. And then craft it. And actually, I think, yeah, you, can, you can't you can craft it in the crafting table. It has to be done in the anvil with the controller core, and that gets the factory controller. Very important part. All the rest of these have a crafting table version. All these do. Yep. So, all you need the anvil to do is make the dies. Even the ender shards, yeah, that those could be done. Yeah, the dies and the factory controller, and that's it. So it probably was a little overkill to set up this mini mini automation, this uh, helper automation, but uh, I did it. But like I said, I've done all of this already, and I'm actually going to go ahead and take this stuff down because oh, magnet back on. Look at that. Yeah, if you noticed, my floor, some of the columns in the walls, inside and outside, are scrambled. That's because <laughs> I've been doing the bees, little bit by bit, working my way up to the quantum bees that are necessary for the ATM star, which is my endgame. I knew that would take a while, so I wanted to get it going. Uh, I needed the Ying Essence and the Yang Essence, and they take Quantum Strange and Quantum Charming Bees, which take a while to get up to. Turns out, once you run them, they have a effect that uh, scrambles blocks in the area. It can't mess with the uh, little tiles, walls, that I've got, but everything else got scrambled. It doesn't seem to affect tile entities like machines. Just regular blocks. So you can see I've moved the apiary they were in. There's the yin and yang. I kept one of each just to show that I made it. Uh, but since it was doing damage... Oh, let's 
put the magnet away. I moved it up here where it couldn't do any more damage. So I got a grass block up here with the flowers. So they've got flowers. Uh, it's interesting in that if you look at the uh, uses for this queen, uh, Quantum Strange, with the Quantum Strange, is a 50% chance of mutating into a Charming. And the Charming has a 50% chance of mutating back into a Strange. So once you create a one, it'll automatically create the other just as it runs. As this thing cycles through using the automation upgrade, it'll switch between the two. So what I've got is uh, it's extracting and inserting. Uh, we're extracting down here to the yang and the ying. So ying and the yang. I've got over 200, getting close to 300 of each. Way more than I need, probably. Definitely. And I have this trash chest to handle any overflow drones. I ran them through my gene splicing to make them have a fertility of three. But because of that 50% chance of mutating, once they mutate to the other type, they lose all of the genetic modifications. So they've only been doing one. They only have a fertility of one. So there's always just one drone. Sometimes it's of one type. Sometimes it's another. You know, it's it's messy. But you always get a new queen. Uh, so this trash chest didn't help. The idea was that uh, any excess drones would go into here. And then if they got pulled out before they could be recycled... This is also set to extract and insert back in. So the trash chest won't throw anything away until every slot is filled. And then the next item to come in, it throws away the thing that's been in the chest the longest. If they don't stack. So, this has been working, and like I said, I've got plenty of yin and yang. So that part of the ATM star is ready. I haven't fixed my old base here, but then I'm moving to the new one, so it doesn't matter too much. And there's nothing left in that one. All right, so let's head back to the space base. Space base. Oh, I've got to fill my food. Eh. I think I've got some emergency baked potatoes. Oh, actually, let's not worry about it. We're going to have plenty of food in a little bit. You'll see what I mean. I wanted to do something a little different with the Woot, and even though it costs a bit to power it, I want it to be self-powering. Load. Load. There we go. So, let's drop downstairs. Uh, and I've got all the parts we need to make the Woot system right here. We've got, let's see what's the, they're all sort of mixed together. Okay, flesh, the factory flesh casing. Let me show some of these recipes. A lot of these casing, in fact, all of these casings are a combination of a factory base, which is soul stone and a stygian iron plate, and you get four. Soul stone is two cobble, and that's soul dust, and the soul dust is the mesh dye with soul sand. And a yaw hammer. Or you can just take yaw hammer and this, you know, that only makes one, this makes three. Use the dye. It's worth it. You'll need a whole bunch of these. Because from these you make the casings. So we've got the flesh casings, which use rotten flesh. Uh... Bone casings, which you can guess, use bone. Ender casings, which use an ender pearl. They can also use these shards that, that you get when operating the Woot machine. But we don't have those, supposedly, because we haven't run the machine yet. So we're going to be using ender pearls. Uh, blaze, which of course is blaze rods. They take a Tier 2 is equivalent. And the big one that we need lots of, the nether casings. You need, looks like, uh, 
95 of them. I thought it was only 94. At least I think that's what the book said. Uh, crouch, click, and whooped. Now it does says 95. All right, 95. <laughs> yeah, this here's the full list. It's in the book. Uh, yeah, 14 bone, 10 flesh, 35 blaze, 60 ender, 95 nether. And then we need these capstones. So let's grab the capstones. Uh, they're the things that don't have the bases. Here's the tier 1 cap. You need two of those. Uh... Oh, here we go. That is three. Need five tier three. There's no sort on these iron storage boxes, which is annoying. See that? Okay, that's the two cap. All right. Let's move these three down here. Sort this a little bit. That's that. It's the heart. It's those. All right, that's all of them. Oh, and then here's the, the four. You need seven of the tier four. So two tier one, four tier two, five tier three, seven tier four. And then you need a controller and the heart. Oh, and four upgrade bases. And not all those are mentioned. All those other, well, of those other things, uh, the heart and the upgrade bases and the controller are not listed in this list, but they are necessary for a tier four, which is what I'm going for. All right, so we take our heart, place it here. You can see it's a ways down. Uh, let's see how far to count. Should I count it? Let's see. Uh, get out some more of these. So that's going to be the Master Ritual Stone. So one, two, three, four down from the Master Ritual, ritual Stone, which is, uh, that's the altar. So drape one, two, three, four, and then the Master Stone. So four air blocks there, four air blocks here. That keeps it nice and easy to remember. Now, to put this thing together, if you know it, you can put it all together yourself, but you can make the intern, which is all vanilla stuff except for this factory layout block, which is also vanilla stuff. So the intern is not hard to make. And all you do is right click with all the stuff in your inventory and it starts to build it one layer at a time. And you can just hold down right click. And uh, when you crouch right-click with it, it changes the tier that it's going to build, and I have it set to 4. So I'm going right away to the biggest one, because that gives you the most upgrades. And it's probably worth it. it. may take a little bit more power, but I'm going to make it self-powering, which is the fun part. Well, a fun part. And this takes a little while. <laughs> It'd take a lot longer if I was doing it by hand. All right, are we done? Yes, I see all seven of the little green ones up there. It is now done. But uh, you notice there's a gap, gaps between all the blocks? That means it has not yet formed. And there's a couple things it needs. The first is a controller. Now this says mob chicken. So how do the how do I make this? I already said that you assemble this from a shard, a controller core, and a factory base in the anvil. It's the other recipe you need the anvil for. The ender shard, you can make three of them from an eye of ender and you're in, in a crafting table. Then what you do is you take this thing and you hit a mob with it. 
uh, then you kill the mob. And you can kill it with this thing. And I went around to chickens. And I hit a chicken, which killed it, but didn't actually count as one of the four chickens you need. So I had to go around and kill four more chickens with this shard. And you see it says here, un unprogrammed. Once you've killed enough chickens, and it tells you how many you've killed and how many you need to kill, of whatever mob it is, uh, once it's programmed, that's when you use it in the anvil to craft the factory controller. So I've done that. And uh, we have the uh, Tier 1 chicken. Place that down there. It does not go on top of the heart. It goes on the block behind it, next to the blue ones here. Still, there's still gaps, so it hasn't fully formed. And that's because we need these three. Let's put away those, and I don't need the intern anymore. So what we got here is an advanced power cell, a factory exporter, and a factory importer. The exporter goes at the bottom. The importer goes in the middle. And I made the advanced power cell, which requires three of the basics. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm, excuse me. I made the advanced power cell, which requires four of the basics and a Power 2 Enchanted Book, and a Power Core, which is coal and some stygian iron, and a bunch of redstone blocks. These guys, redstone and a Power Core. Pretty simple. The third tier requires two, uh, uh, two Enchanted Books, a Power 3, an Efficiency 3, and a Dragon Egg. And I'm currently using my Dragon Egg, so I thought, eh, I don't really need this one. That goes there. And now, everything's solid. All the blocks have increased in size, and there's no more gaps. Now you can right-click this and open it up. Oh, and there's still power in, the, in it from when I was using it before. But basically, you put a power cell against this uh, importer of power there, and uh, it starts to run. Down here tells you what gets dropped and it it won't have everything in there at first these only appear as they happen as it basically imagines killing a chicken getting the loot and runs through the loot table of the chicken and whatever it gets it puts here it doesn't actually show you the loot table so if something is a very rare drop it may take a long time for it to appear in this list but you can see we're making one chicken every 400 ticks at a cost of 4 RF a tick. Not bad. Total of 1,600 RF per chicken. But we can make some further changes. I've got all these things. So what do we got here? These are upgrades. There are three levels for each upgrade. This is mass. Uh, there's a one, two, and a three. You can look at their bases. Iron, gold, and diamond. And they use those materials in their recipes. Now they all, all of these take enchanted books. So for the mass, use the fortune enchantment. The tier one mass upgrade takes a fortune one. The tier two upgrade takes a fortune two. And of course, Three is three. The uh, biblio uh, bibliotech bibliotech right bibliocraft bibliocraft uh, system of duplicating enchantment books that I showed in a previous episode very useful for this. So I'm going to put down the first tier of that right there. On top of it is the second tier, and on top of that goes the third tier. Now, if you, can, whoop, if you look in here now, we're making six chickens. So that increased the number of chickens we're making in the same amount of time, but it is taking more power. But it's not six times as much power. It's only four times as much power. 
So there's an efficiency savings. Not only do you get them faster, but you're saving a little bit of power per chicken. And that's true for whatever mob, I think. Should be. Uh, rate. The rate upgrade speeds it up. It went from 400 ticks to 300 ticks. And it increased the amount of power per tick. But this was a 25% reduction in time. And hmm, that was a 25% increase in RF. No real savings there, but if you do want your output faster, this is a good way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and add all three levels of that and see. Now we're up to 96 RF a tick. And we're down to only 100 ticks, so a quarter of the time. and four times as much power per tick. I'm just using the stored power still, so eventually I'm going to run out. All right, next, efficiency. This is going to decrease the amount of power that uh, is needed. Put all three of those on there. Oh, look, it brought it down to 58 RF a tick. That's a good savings. Not quite half, but pretty good. Now it's going to get expensive. <laughs> the last three here are what we really need for this build. This is the Blood Magic Life Essence Altar Upgrade. Now, if we look at Woot, there are three types of Blood Magic upgrades. There is the Tank Upgrade, the Altar Upgrade, well, excuse me, the third is for evil craft. So there's really just two for blood magic. Uh, this, the tank one, will let you pipe the LP that gets created into a tank. This will pipe it directly into the altar. Now, I've chosen this one because I could pump it out of the altar if I want. I may change it. I, I haven't really tested it too much. So for now, we're going to go with this. So let's see, put on one of them. And we went up to 250 RF a tick. Put on the second. 442 RF a tick. And the last one. 634 RF a tick. That's a whole lot more expensive to do. But like I said... I'm going to make it self-powered. So, before we hook it up... Well, no, let's go ahead and go vertically here, since it's still running. Not for much longer. I made Ritual Stones and the Master Ritual. I made the Awakened Activation Crystal. There are two activation... Well, three. One of them is creative, though. But there's two that you can make. This one, which you take a lava crystal, which is a whole bunch of stuff together to make the lava crystal. Or you uh, just take another star and mix it with the blood orb, uh, an archmage's blood orb, which I have in crafting table to make this guy. <laughs> so instead of making this complicated recipe and running it in the altar, I just went ahead and made the cheaper one, in my opinion, which is the more expensive one. Did I get everything else I needed out of there? Oh, no, I need that. I might as well get the rest. You can slap a lever on the front of this and turn the thing off. You have to open it with an empty hand. Oh, it ran out of power anyway. I didn't turn it off in time. That's okay. All right. So, these things things will output the LP. Notice this interface says nothing about the LP. It gives you the drops, but it doesn't tell you how much LP is produced, unfortunately. Uh, drops in this section. This, for some of the mobs, some of the bosses, like dragons, chaos dragons, uh, withers, you have to feed ingredients into this root system in order for it to actually work. Uh, that's what the uh, 
import block is for, but we're not using that right now. So where does the LP store? I mean, it's been running for a little bit. Where did that LP go? <laughs> Nowhere. I think it's gone. You need to use a master ritual crystal and a ritual in order to get it actually to go into the a tank or, in this case, the altar. Now, uh, crouch right click, crouch left click. Ritual of the mechanical altar. That is what I have it set to. Once you make this guy, uh, which is the dusk ritual diviner, you make a regular ritual diviner, diamond stick, and then these things. Each one is some object put into the blood altar. Obsidian, magma, lapis lazuli block, gas tier. And then you need two of these, which are, ignore the eight, just a block of coal, and two demonic slates, which come from a tier four altar. And then you can crouch, right click, and left click to go through a whole list of these uh, rituals. But it's the mechanical altar that you want. And that's what it looks for. It looks like. And you'll need the 24 ritual stones in your inventory. And then you can just hold down right click and watch them all appear. Now it should not do any more green sparkles. Good, it's done. It too can have a lever. But I'm not going to... Turning the lever on will disable it, just like that one. To activate the ritual, you need to have a certain amount of LP in your blood network, or it won't work. I made the divination sigil, I think I made that in the last video. Right click it, you can see I've got a lot of LP in my system, and that's just from two hours maybe of, of testing, once I had this working. So you take your activation crystal and whack it. And it says a rush of energy flows through the ritual. I now probably have a little bit less LP. I don't remember what it was. It wasn't a huge amount, but it made a change. All right. That's done with. That's done with. We'll use these in a bit. I also don't need the sacrificial dagger anymore. Yay. Now if this thing gets power we will get more blood in the system. I guess just to show that, let's go ahead and get out a power cell. Hook it up. Oop, I'm frozen. Did I just break something? Shouldn't have. I've done this before. It's probably just this pack freezing like it does every now and then. Okay. We're back. So it's running now. Oh, no, because I had turned it off. Okay, now it's running. So, we should be seeing the altar filling up with blood. It is not. There's nothing in it, right? Oh, no. My Ar Archmage Blood Orb is still in there. All right, now let's look at it. Hmm. It's both going up and down. Is there something else in it? Nothing seems to be in it. Why is it going down? Let me go up there. Huh. I don't know where the blood is going. It should not be leaving. I mean, if I put that in there, it should go into my blood network. So this number should be going up. And it is. 737295, 737760. Yep, it's going up. But it should also be filling up. Uh, 
but it's draining. I hadn't tried it without the orb. I don't know. Oh, I know why. No, I don't know why. I mean, this thing requires some LP to run, but it's getting it from my orb. So this orb... Oh, yeah, don't do it while crouching. Why is it harming me? Oh, yeah, it does that. I forgot. I need to look at this. This should be going down. 929... 917, yep. So that ritual requires a little bit of LP over time. But nowhere near what's being pulled out of the altar. Oh, no, wait. Now there's a whole lot in there. Now it's just going up. I don't know why it was going down for a little bit there. <laughs> It was acting as if something was either piping it out or it was doing some sort of crafting. All right, now it's working. Mysteries. So, uh, what I was thinking about doing was, since this is going to continuously produce uh, LP, I want to have extra LP go somewhere. So what I'm going to do is tell it to extract and insert into here. So now this should be going up. Yep. Well, that's draining what's already in there. But as this ritual pipes it into the altar, it'll get piped out into this black hole tank. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my orb up in there. It's going to absorb most of the LP really quick. So probably little to none is going to come down here. Well, it got some. So it's managing to grab a little bit before the uh, orb can get it. That's fine. That way I've got a backup of LP for crafting. Uh, even if my... Archmage's orb sucks it all up, which it's probably going to. It's gonna, it can hold a lot. All right, so we now have unlimited LP from chickens, without actually having mobs in the world being simulated by the game with all their pathing and so forth. So it's a little nicer on the surf server. It would have been a whole lot cheaper just to make the well of suffering. And like put some zombies on some uh, graveyard soil or some witches uh, underneath it. But I wanted to do something different. And now, to do something even more different, I'm not going to use my power to pay that 600 and... How much? 634 RF a tick. No, uh, we're making... Oh, this is gotten full. Those stay in there. So this is what we're getting. We're getting the raw chicken, feathers, solidified experience, inferium. Those are all the things that it says we get. But we're also getting these shards. So these are the things you can use to make the factory casings, uh, which now I don't need, but I'll probably be making more Woot uh, setups in the future. In which case, I'll probably use those shards, since that's the only thing they're useful for. Alright, I also made some a black hole controller and some black hole units. I've got one for raw chicken, one for cooked chicken, one for feathers, one for the solidified experience, and one for the inferium essence. And I'm just going to see there. Yeah, nothing's going into there. It prefers going into this crate, which is good. I'm going to tell it to extract. Uh, let's see, it's uh, give it 15. Why not? And we'll insert into the black hole. There we go. This is also going to extract. I guess see, let's let's extract from the top. That way, it's separate. 
a little clearer. All right, so we've got these raw chickens. Let's cook them. Ultimate furnace. Uh, if you haven't seen the recipe for this thing, it's another star, three blocks of supremium essence, four weather skeleton skulls, and a supremium furnace. Supremium furnace and all the ones below it follow the same pattern. One block of the essence, three of the pieces, make and the previous version. Just all the way down the line to the basic one, just built off a regular furnace. Not too expensive at this point in time. I'm going to place it there. Uh, we're going to export out the bottom. It, it acts like a regular furnace in that regard. We're going to insert on the side for fuel. And we're going to insert on the top. Oh, but not yet. Because it probably just put... No, it didn't. Okay. Uh, this is the extract. I'm going to put a filter for raw chicken. And now, oh yeah, I didn't connect it up, so it's fine. Insert. Should get raw chicken in here. No. It's, oh, it's because it's coming out of here. Uh, I guess I should put a filter up here on the insert. Oh, that's cooked chicken. I need the cooked chicken. I'll do colors. We'll output this one on red and input over here on red. And then I'll have input on green up top. There we go. So that'll only go into there. And then this can pipe in and out on green. So I'll take those out. And they should now only be raw chicken. Okay, good. Put those back. All right, so this thing is getting the raw chicken, but now it needs some fuel, like sticks. You see, they last for a very long time, and it cooks very quickly. Oh, I think we need to put in some up speed upgrades down here, too. That'll empty it. And I'll put some speed upgrades in the extract there, so that'll keep it running through. And because I made a black hole thing for cooked chicken, the raw chicken should empty out pretty quickly using this system. So like I said, sticks and saplings and oak, well, spruce, and even leaves can all be used as fuel in this thing. Put the leaves in. <laughs> uh, they last different amounts of time, of course, just like in a regular furnace. Saplings in. No, not, not all the saplings. I need two. Uh, but they, are, they can cook so much with just a little tiny bit. So we're going to run those with a hopping bonsai. We're actually make two of them. Can I get to that one on, underneath? Yeah, there we go. Extract. Insert. Put some grass in there, because grass is a little bit better. The saplings in there. We're going to extract out of that and hook it up. Like so. And we can even color code this to brown, let's say. And then this insert on brown. So as those trees grow, there, they're providing the fuel for the furnace. And it should be more than enough. In fact, I'm just going to put the sticks back in here. Excess will build up in here. Once that's full, these things will just not produce anything because we'll have way more fuel than we need. I don't think I actually need this filter, so I'm going to throw it away. All right, so now we're generating the chicken. We're storing all the drops. We're cooking the raw chicken into cooked chicken. We've got lots of it now. I have 14 culinary generators. 
And this is how we're going to power the whole Woot system. Like so. Now take some extra item conduits here and run them around. Is that good? I think I need one over. Oop, I ran out. It's because I had a slightly different arrangement, but I think this one's a little bit more symmetrical. Okay, there's a couple more of those in case I need them. All right, now these all have to be set to insert. I know I could use a logic probe to do this slightly faster, but uh, I think I've got one from a crate or something, but instead of setting that up, it's not too long to do these by hand. One more and we're done. All right, now they should all be, oh no, you have to uh, set the export to round robin. Actually, I also need to tell it to export cooked chicken. So I can export cooked chicken as well. And I set it to round robin, I did. Okay, there they're all lighting up. Should all have a stack of chicken in them. Good. Now we just have to get that power into the system, and that's really easy. We're just going to put some power conduits all the way around. And one in the middle that connects to the power input. Now I can take that off. And this should be completely self-sufficient. Let's go see if it's happy. It's fully powered. Now I know that 14 is the right amount because I, I calculated how many I needed and then had to add one more. <laughs> So I was, it was just starting to drain a little bit with one less. With, with just 12, but, or just 13. But with 14, it has enough. And the spruce wood is going to be kept plenty up to speed with these two. And there's backup fuel in there. All right. We are done. These may eventually fill this thing up. If so, I'll make some... Uh, some black hole controllers, but that's going to take a while. So they don't show up very often, as far as I can tell. But now, even if the rest of my power system fails, this will keep running. So how are we doing for blood now? Look at that, we're up to... We've gone from 700,000 to 800,000. So this is working. this away. I can put away the paws. These are getting more common. I don't need the sacrificial dagger anymore, so I'm going to put that away when I can. There we go. Uh, put away the activation and the ritual diviner. I will clear the book back to its generic form and put it away in my... Oh, I already have one in there. I've got two of these. All right, throw this one away. Divination sigil, I guess I will keep that on me. Seems like a wise idea. And we're done. Oh, that was a different sort of pause, but I may need to restart the pack. I've been running it for a while. I need to fix my floor. Do that, grab the underfloor texture. 
That is not what I wanted to do. Ah, yeah, I'm freezing constantly now. I think there might be a memory leak, perhaps, in one of the mobs mods. A naughty programmer. There's that. Cover it up with There we go. Blood Magic Room complete. For now. I may need to uh, upgrade the automation. Now that I've got full uh, it's frozen again full altar size. Uh, instead of using 5,000 for my minimum blood, I'm going to use the current tank maximum. Uh, that way it'll only process something when the altar is full. Which, once you take something out, should start filling up. See there, it still goes down for a little while after you take out the orb. I wonder if it's also going into the system now. That's only going down. I don't know where it goes. Oh, I know what it is. There is an, an internal tank in the altar that you can't see. It's not a real tank that can be piped into or out of. That's where it's being diverted to, I think. I think it holds 8,000, like one-tenth of whatever the maximum is. And this is a 80,000, so 8,000 will fit in that tank. Once that 8,000 is full, then it should start filling up the visible tank. I'm surprised it doesn't go straight in there. But that might even be more confusing, because then I'd be creating blood and nothing would be showing up on the display. I probably should just show you that extra tank. No. All right. So that is not a full episode, I don't think. I'll check the time. But uh, I need to figure out what I'm going to do next. <laughs> so without all the crafting on camera, this went a lot faster. So I will be back in a moment with our next project. Let's make one change. I found a slight flaw. Uh, the Ultimate Furnace is getting the cooked chicken in it. So I'm going to go into its insert, add a filter, make it a blacklist, and say don't put cooked chicken in the top. That way it only gets the raw chicken. I came down just to get a snack because I'm hungry. <laughs> like I said, no lack of food. <laughs> I put these in my system. Now I've got food available. All right. Oh, these aren't running. Oh, they're fully... Are they not connected? Oh, all right. One more flaw in the system. I forgot to connect these two to the power. I wonder if we were losing... Yeah, we were losing a little bit of power. But now if I put my cursor over that line, should see it go up. Yep, there we go. So if you see this going down, if it's not staying completely full, you're not producing quite enough power. But once you do produce enough power, you should see it go up more than it goes down. So good. Now we're good. Now we're done. <laughs> And I guess we'll end it here, because it is getting on towards an hour. Not every episode during the uh, quarantine age that we are currently in needs to be super long. Uh, this is just a logical stopping point for this episode as we finish off the Blood Magic room. So, this is Nonsanity, signing off. Take care. Really. Take care, be good, and see you next time.